Ashley Black, reading Nora Roberts' book, Inner Harbor. Chapter 9. She's, she's in Hampton. Philip kept his eyes on Seth as he relayed the information. He watched calmly a hand on the boy's rigid shoulder, and an unspoken sign of protection. She was picked up by the police, drunk and disorderly possession. She's in jail, Seth's face was wide open. They can keep her in jail. She's there now. How long she would stay there, Philip thought, was another point. She probably has enough money to postpone. You mean she can pay them money and they'll let her go? When these camps hands Seth began to fall. No matter what? I don't know, but for now... But for now, we know exactly where she is. I'm going to talk to her. Don't! Don't go there! Seth, we've talked about this. Came massage the shaking shoulder as he turned Seth to face him. The only way we're going to fix this for good is to deal with her. I won't go back. It was said in a whisper, but a fierce one. I'll never go back. You won't go back. He sent on hitched his tool bait, laid it on the workbench. You can stay with Grace until Anna gets home. Look at Philip again. We'll go to Hampton. What if the cops say I have to? What if they come while you're gone? And says, Phil went up to the rising desperation. Crowd six heads, arms firm. You have to trust us. So I stared back at him with Ray Quinn's eyes. Those eyes were glazed with tears and terror. First time Philip looked into them and felt no shadowy resentment, no doubts. You belong with us, he said quietly. Nothing's going to change that. A long shot and breast said nodded. He had no choice. Could do nothing but hope and fear. We'll take my car, Philip stated. Grace and Anna will calm him down. Came ship to wrestling the passenger seat of Philip's Jeep. It's being. It's hell being that scared. From the back seat, Ethan glanced at the speedometer and noted that Philip was pushing 80. Not being able to do anything but wait and see. She fucked herself. Philip said, Philip, like getting arrested isn't going to help her custody case if she tries to make one. She doesn't want the kid. <sighs> she doesn't want the kid. Philip spared a brief glance. No, she wants money. She isn't going to bleed any of us, but we're going to get some answers. We're going to end it. She lied, <laughs> Philip thought. He had no doubt that she would lie and will and maneuver, but she was wrong. Dead wrong if she thought she could get past the three of them. The set. He'll handle, he'll handle what comes next, Ray right? said. Philip's hand tightened on the wheel. He got this ice on the road. He'll handle it all right, one way or the other. <laughs> With her head throbbing and her stomach rolling, Sabille walked into the small county police station. Gloria had called her, weeping and desperate, begging for her to send money for bail. For bail, Sabille thought now, fighting off a shudder. Gloria sat. Said it was a mistake, she reminded herself. A terrible misunderstanding, of course. What else could it have been? She nearly wired the money. She still wasn't sure what had stopped her, what had pushed her to get into her car and drive. To help, of course, she told herself. She only wanted to help. I'm here for Glory DeLotner, she told the uniform officer who sat behind a narrow, cluttered counter. I'd like to see her, if possible. Your name? Griffin, Dr. Spill Griffin, I'm her sister. I'll post her bond, but I'd, I'd like to see her. Can I see some ID? Oh, yes. She fumbled in a purse for her wallet. Her hands were damp and shaky, but the cop simply watched her with cool eyes. So she offered an identification. Why don't you have a seat? He suggested then scrapped back his own chair. Scraped back his own chair and slipped into an adjoining room. He th her throat was dry and desperate for water. She wondered... The small waiting area with its grouping of hard plastic chairs and industrial beige until she found a water fountain. While well, the water hit her tortured stomach like frigid balls of lead. <laughs> had they put her in a cell? Oh, God, had they actually put her sister in a cell? Is that where she would have to see Gloria? But under the sorrow, her mind was working coldly, pragmatically. How would Gloria have known where to reach her? What was she doing so close to St. Christopher's? Why was she accused of having drugs? That was why she hadn't wired the money. She admitted now. She wanted the answers. Dr. Griffin. She jolted, turned to the office, her, with her eyes wide as a doze, kind of like, Yes, can I see her now? I'll need you to take your purse. I'll give you a receipt. All right. She handed it over to him. Signed the log where he indicated, except a receipt for her belongings. This way. He gestured toward the side door, then opened it into a narrow corridor. On the left was a small room furnished only with a single table and a few chairs. Gloria sat at one, her right, right wrist cuffed to the table. His first first thought was that 
They had made a mistake. This wasn't her sister. They brought the wrong woman into the room. This one looked far too old, far too hard, with a bony body, the shoulders like points of wings, the contrast of breasts pressing against the tiny snug sweater, so hard that the nipples stood out in arrogant relief. Her frizzled mass of star-colored hair had a dark streak shooting up in the center, deep lines dug in around her mouth, and the calculating chin in her eyes was as sharp as her shoulders. Then those eyes filled. That mouth room. Seb, her voice cracked as she held out an employable hand. Thank God you'd come. Gloria, she stepped forward quickly, took that chicken hand in her. What happened? I don't know. I don't understand any of it. I'm so scared. She laid her head on the table and began to weep in loud, racking sobs. Please. Instinctively, Sybil sat and draped her arm around her sister as she looked over the guy. Can we be alone? I'll be right outside. He looked back. Gloria, he thought what a change this was from the screaming, cursing woman who'd been pulled in a few hours ago. His face revealed nothing. He stepped out, shut the door, and left him alone. Let me get you some water. Sibyl Rose hurried over to the water jug in the corner, filled a thin triangle of paper, scrubbed her hands around her sister's sister holding it steady. Did you pay the bail? Why can't we just go? I don't want to stay here. I'll take care of it. Tell me what happened. I said I don't know. I was with this guy. I was lonely. She sniffed except for the tissue that Sibyl passed. We were just talking for a while. We were going to go out to lunch. Then the cops came up. He ran away and they grabbed me. It all happened so fast. She buried her face in her hand. They found drugs in my purse. He must have put them there. Just wanted someone to talk to. All right. I'm sure we'll straighten in. It all out, Sibyl wanted to believe to accept, and she hated herself because she couldn't. Not quite. What was his name? John. John Barlow. He seemed so sweet, Sibyl, so understanding. I was feeling really low because of sex. She threw her hands and her eyes were trapped. I miss my little boy so much. Were you coming to St. Christopher's? Glory, Lord. I thought if I just had the chance to see him. Is that what the lawyer suggested? The, oh, the hesitation was brief, but it set off warning bells in Sibyl's head. No, but lawyers don't understand. They just keep asking for money. What's your lawyer's name? I'll call him. He may be able to help straighten this out. He's not from around here. Look, Sibyl, I just want to get out of here. You can't believe how horrible it is. That cop out there, she not to he put his hands on me. Sibyl's stomach began to fish. What do you mean? You know what I mean. The first hit of noise, sister. He felt me up. Then he said he'd be back later for more. He's going to rape me. Sibyl shut her eyes, pressed her fingers to them. When the teenager's glory had accused more than a dozen boys and men of molesting her, including her high school counselor and principal, even their own father. Gloria, don't do this. I said I would help you. I'm telling you that bastard put his hands all over me. As soon as I'm out of here, I'm filing charges. She crumbled a paper cup. He did. I don't give a damn if you believe me or not. I know what happened. All right, but let's deal with now. How did you know where to find me? What? A dark rage had been sliding over her brain, and she had to struggle to remember her role. What do you mean? I didn't tell you where I was going, where I would be. I said I would contact you. How did you know to call me at the hotel in St. Christopher's? It had been a mistake, which Gloria had realized shortly after making the call. But she'd been drunk and furious, and damn it, she didn't have the cash on her hair. On her to make bail, what she had left was safely tucked away until the Quins added to it. She was thinking when she called Sibyl, but she had time to think since. The way to play Sister Sibyl, she knew, was to tug on the kill and responsibility strings. I know you, she offered a weird smile. I knew that when I told you what happened with Seth, you'd help. I tried your apartment in New York, which she had more than a week ago, and when your instant service said you were out of town, I explained how I was your sister, and there was an emergency. The government number of the hotel. I see. It was plausible, spilled, decided, even logical. I'll take care of the bell, Gloria, but there are conditions. Yeah? She got a short laugh. That sounds familiar. I need the name of your lawyer so I can contact him. I want to be brought up to date on the status of this situation with Seth. I want you to talk to me. We'll have dinner and you can explain to me about the Quins. You can explain to me why they claim Ray gave you money for Seth. The bastards are liars. I'll meet I've met them, she said calmly, and their wives. I've seen Seth. It's very difficult for me to equate what you told me with what I've seen. You can't put everything all neat and tidy into reports. Christ, you're just like the old man. She started to get up, snarled at the jerk of the couple of her. The two intimate Dr. Griffins. 
This has nothing to do with my father, supposed like Riley. And everything I suspect to do with yours. Fuck this. Glory twist her lips into fish mouth. And fuck you. Perfect daughter, the perfect student, the perfect goddamn robot. Just pay the fucking bail. I got money by. I got money put by. You'll get it back. I'll give my kid back without your help, sister dear. My kid. You want to take the word of a bunch of strangers over your own flesh and blood? Go right ahead. You always hate me anyway. I don't hate you, Gloria. I never have. But she could. She realized as the ache began in her head and heart. She was afraid she was very easily could. And I'm not taking anybody's word over yours. I'm just trying to understand. The liberty Gloria turned her face away to Seville. Wouldn't see her smile of satisfaction. She found the right button to push after all. She just said, I need to get out of here. I need to get cleaned up. She made certain her voice. I can't talk about this anymore. I'm so tired. I'll go deal with the paperwork. I'm sure it won't take long. As she rose, Gloria grabbed her hand again and pressed the church. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I said those things to you. I didn't mean them. I'm just upset and confused. I feel so alone. It's all right. So Pill pulled her hand free and walked to the door on legs that felt as brittle as glass. Outside, she downed two aspirin and chased them with antacids as she walked, waiting for the bail to be processed. Physically, she thought, Gloria had changed. The once astonishing beauty... Pretty girl had hardened, tough and like dry leather, but emotionally still feared she was exactly the same unhappy, manipulative, and disturbed child that had taken dark joy in disrupting their home. She would insist that Gloria agree to therapy if she decided and if drug abuse was part of the problem, she would see it to that Gloria when it's rehab. Certainly the woman she'd just spoken with wasn't capable of taking custody of a young boy. She would explore the possibilities of what was best for him until Gloria was back on track. She would need to see a lawyer, of course. First thing in the morning, she would find a lawyer and discuss Gloria's rights and assess welfare. She would have to face the Quins. She thought of that. The thought of that had her stomach clenching again. A confrontation was inevitable, unavoidable. Nothing left here. Nothing left her feeling more miserable and vulnerable than angry words and hateful emotions but she would be prepared she would take the time to think through what had to be said anticipating their questions and demands so she would have their proper responses she would above all remain calm and objective when she saw philip walk into the building her mind went blank every ounce of all color drained out of her face she stood frozen when his gaze whipped to hers when i narrowed in heart <laughs> what are you doing here sabib sabil I, it wasn't panic that spurred through her, but embarrassment. Shame. I had business. Really? He stepped closer. His brother stood back in speculative silence. He saw it in her face. Give him more than a little fear. What kind of business would that be? When she didn't answer, he angled his head. What's Gloria to lie her to you, Dr. Griffin? She ordered herself to keep her gaze steady, her voice even. She's my sister. His fury was ice. Cold and deadly, put his hands into his pockets, keep from using them on in a way that was unforgivable. That's cozy, isn't it, you bitch? He said softly, but she flushed as if he had struck. You used me to get the set. She shook her head, but she couldn't voice the denial. It was true, wasn't it? She had used him, had used all of them. I only wanted to see him. He's my sister's son. I, I had to know he was being cared for. Then where the hell have you been for the last ten years? She opened her mouth. Let's swallow the excuses. The explanation to his glory was let out. Let's get the hell out of here. Buy me a drink, Sib. Gloria hitched a cherry red shoulder bag over her arm, aimed an individual tape from a while. Philip, we'll talk. We'll talk all you want. Hi, we'll talk all you want. Hi there, handsome. She shifted her weight, but a fist on her hip. Put a fist on her hip and let the smile spread to the other man. How's the other man? How's it going? Under other circumstances, the contrast between a woman might have been laughable. Sibyl Bill stood pale and quiet, her glossy brown hair brushed smoothly back, her mouth unpainted, her eyes shadowed. She excluded simple elegance in a tailored gray blazer and slacks of white silk blouse, while Gloria offered sharp bones and overblown curves, poured into black jeans and a snug sweater that plunged between her breasts. She was taking the time to repair her makeup, and her lips were slack. Sickly red as her handbag, her eyes lined. She looked. Philip decided to like precisely what she was, an aging whore looking for an angle. She pushed a cigarette out of her crumbled pack in her bag, then wiggled between her fingers. Got a light, big guy? Gloria, this is Philip Quinn. The formal introduction echoed hollered in her. His brothers, Cameron and Ethan. Well, well, well. Gloria's smile went sharp and ugly. Ray Quinn's wicked trio. 
What the hell do you want? Answers. Bill says, let's take this outside. I'm not going. I'm not. I've got nothing to say to you. Make one move I don't like, I'll start screaming. She jabbed with the unlit cigarette. There's a house full of cops in here. We'll see how you like spending some time in the cage. Gloria! So Bill put a restraining hand on her arm. The only way to straighten this out is to discuss it rationally. They don't look like they want to dis want a rational discussion to me. They want to hurt me. She shifted tax skillfully. Throw her arms around so Bill cleaner. I'm afraid of them, so Bill, please help me. I'm trying to, Gloria. No one's going to hurt you. We'll find a place where we can all sit down and talk this through. I'll be right there with you. I'm going to be sick. She yanked back, wrapped her arms around her stomach, dashing into the bathroom. Quite a performance. Philip decided. She's upset. So Bill linked her hands together, twisting her fingers. She's not in any shape to deal with this tonight. Shifted his gaze back to Sibyl. Sibyl's in it was... Ripe with duration. Do you want me to believe you bought that? Either you're incredible gullible, or you think I am. And spent most of the af she spent most of the afternoon in jail. Said Bill, snap back. Anyone would be upset. Can we discuss all this tomorrow? It's waited this long. Surely you can wait one more day. We're here now. Can't put it. We'll deal with it now. Are you going to go in there and bring her out, or am I? Is that how you plan to resolve this by bullying her and me? You don't want to get me started on how I plan to resolve this. Camp began. It struck off Ethan's coming. After what she puts that through, there's nothing we can do to her that she hasn't earned. Sabelle glanced uncomfortably behind her. The uniform must remain. I don't think any of us want to cause a scene in a police station. Fine. Philip took her arm. Let's just step outside and cause one. She held her ground, partially out of fear, partially common sense. We'll meet tomorrow at wherever time is convenient for you. I'll bring her to my hotel. You keep her out of St. Chris. Spill wince when Philip's fingers tighten on her. All right. All right. Where do you suggest? I'll tell you what I suggest. Can't be gambled, Philip told me. Princess Anne, you bring her into Anna's office at social services. Nine o'clock. That keeps everything official, doesn't it? Everything above board. Yes, relief director. I couldn't agree to that. I'll bring her. You have my word. I wouldn't give you two cents for your words, so Bill. Phil being lie slightly. But if you don't bring her, we'll find her. Meanwhile, if either of you tries to get within a mile of Seth, you'll both be spending time in the cell. Drop the arm and step back. We'll be there at nine, she said, resisting the urge to rub her aching heart. Then she turned and went into the bathroom to get to her sister. Why the hell did you agree to that? Came to man and he stalked outside behind Phil. We've got her here and now. We'll get more out of her tomorrow. Bullshit. <laughs> Phil's right. As much as it as much as he detested, he's not accepted the change of plans. We keep an official surroundings. We keep our heads. That's better for Seth. Why? So his bitch of a mother and his lying auntie have more time to put their heads together? Christ, when I think the bill was alone, we're set for a good hour today. I want to. It's done! Bill said, he's fine. We're fine. With Fury blowing through his blood, he slammed into the jeep. And there were five of us. They won't get their hands on Seth. He didn't recognize her. He's a point out. That's funny, isn't it? He didn't know who Spill was. Neither did I. Philip murmured and shoved the gear in the gear. But I do now. Spill's priority was to get Gloria a hot meal. Keep her calm and questioned her carefully. The little Italian restaurant was only a few blocks from the police station, and after a hurried glance, Spill decided to fill the bill. My nerves are shot to hell. Gloria puffed greedy, greedily on a cigarette while Spill maneuvered to a parking spot. The nerve of those bastards coming after me like that. You know what they had done if I'd been alone, don't you? Spill only sighed and stepped out of the car. You need to eat. Yeah, sure. Gloria snipped at the decor. The minute they stepped inside, it was bright and cheerful. With colorful Italian pottery, thick candles, stripped tablecloths, and decorative bottles of herbed vinaigrettes. I'd rather a steak than wop food. Please. Forcing back irritation, she took Gloria's arm and requested a table for two. Smoking section, Gloria added, already putting out another cigarette as they led to the noisy bar area. Funitonic, a double. So Bill rubbed her temples. Just mineral water, thank you. Loosen up, Gloria suggested when the hostess left him alone. You look like you could use a drink. I'm driving. I don't want one anyway. Shifted away from the smoke, Gloria blew toward her. We have to talk seriously. Let me 
Get some lubrication, will ya? Glory smoked and scanned the men at the bar, so I'm with which one she'd pick up if she didn't have her deadly doll sister along. Christ, the bill was a bore. Always had been, she mused, drumming her fingers on the table, wanting her goddamn drink. But she was useful and always had been. You played a right late on plenty of tears. She came through. She needed a hammer with the quince. The bill was the perfect choice. Upstanding, fucking respectable Dr. Quinn. Gloria, you haven't even asked about Seth. What about him? I've seen him several times, spoken with him. I've seen where he's living, where he goes to school. I've met some of his friends. Gloria clicked into the tone of her sister's voice, adjusting her how is he? She worked over Shakespeare. Did he ask about me? He's fine. Really wonderful, actually. He's grown so much since I saw him. It like a horse, Gloria, remember? It was always grown out of his clothes and shoes like she was made of fucking money or something. He didn't know who I was. <laughs> what do you mean, Gloria? Snatched up her drink in a minute. It was such a... You didn't tell him? No, I didn't. We need a few minutes before ordering. So you're poking around incognito, Gloria let a long horse line. You surprised me, Sib. I thought it best that I observed the situation before changing the dynamics. Gloria's horn. Now that sounds just like you. Man, you don't change observation. Observe the situation before changing the dynamics. She repeated her invitation on a senior voice. Christ. The situation is those sons of bitches have my kid. They threaten me and God knows what they'll do to him. I want some dough to work on getting him back. I sent you money for the lawyer, so Bill reminded her. Gloria clicked ice against her teeth as she drank. The 5000 had come in handy, she thought now. How the hell could she have known? Fast the money she blew, blood out Ray would slip away. She had expenses, then she? She wanted to have some fun for a change. She would have demanded twice as much from him, she decided. Well, she'd get it out of those bastards, he'd raise. You got the money I wired for your lawyer, didn't you, Gloria? Gloria took another drink. Well, yeah, lawyers suck you dry, don't they? Hey, she called out signaling the waitress and found her to her. Hit me again, will ya? If you drink like that and you don't eat, you're gonna be sick again. Like hell, Gloria Sneeder, she snatched up her video. She didn't intend to stick her finger down her throat again. Once was more than enough. Hey, they got steak Florentine. I can handle that. Remember when the old man took us off to Italy that, in that summer? All those hot-looking dudes on motorbikes? Holy God, I had a hell of a time with that guy. What was his name? Carlo, Leo, whatever. I stuck him in, stuck him in the bedroom. You were too shy to stay and watch. So you slipped in the parlor while we did the deed half the night. She snatched up the fresh glass, slipped it in a toast. God bless the Italians. I was a little green with pesto and the sour mistro. Give me the steak. Bloody! Lori held out the menu without looking at the waitress. Skip the rabbit food. Been a while, hasn't it, Sib? What, four? Five years? Six, so Bill corrected. It's been just over six since I came home to find you and Seth gone along with a number of my personal possessions. Yeah, sorry about that. I was messed up. It's tough raising a kid on your own. Money's always tight. He never told me very much about his father. What's to tell? Old news. Shrugged it off and rattled the ice in her glass. All right, then. Let's deal with current events. I need to know everything that happened. I need to understand it in order to help you and to know how to handle our meeting with the Quince tomorrow. Gina taught her over there. What meeting? We're going into social services tomorrow morning to air out the problems, discuss the situation, and try to reach a solution. The hell I am. The only thing they want is to fuck me over. Keep your voice down, so Bill ordered sharply. And listen to me. If you want to straighten yourself out, if you want your son back, this has to be done calmly and legally. Gloria, you need help, and I'm willing to help you. From what I can see, you're not in any shape to take Seth back right now. Whose side are you on? His! It came out of her mouth before she realized that it was the absolute truth. I'm on his side, and I hope that puts me on yours. We need to resolve what happened today. I told you I was set up. Fine, it still needs to be resolved. The courts aren't going to be very sympathetic to a woman who's facing charges of possession. Great, why don't you get on that witness stand and tell them how worthless I am? That's what you think anyway. That's what all of you always thought. Please stop it. Lowering her voice to remember, Sybil leaned over the table. I'm doing everything I know how to do. If you want to prove to me you want to make this work, you have to cooperate. You'll have to give something back, Gloria. Nothing's ever been free with you. We're not talking about me. I'll pay your legal fees. I'll talk to social work services. I'll work to make the Quins understand your needs and your rights. I want you to agree to rehab. For what? You drink too much. She sneered to the cold down more too. I've had a rough day. You had drugs in your possession. I said they weren't fucking mine. You said that before, she so said coolly now. You get counseling, you get therapy, you get rehab. I'll arrange it. I'll foot the bill. I'll help you find a job, a place to stay. 
As long as it's your way. Glory to us, best version. Therapy. You and the old man use that to solve everything. Those are the conditions. So you're running the show. Jesus, order me another drink. I've got to piss. She swung her purse over her shoulder and stole past the bar. Still bet, sat back down and closed her eyes. She wasn't going to order Joe or Leah Gloria another drink. Not when her sister's words were already beginning to slur. That would be another bitter little bathe, she imagined. The aspirin she taken had failed miserably. Her pain was drumming at both temples in a sick and constant rhythm. Across the forehead was a squeezing band of iron. She wanted nothing quiet so much as to stretch out on a soft bed in dark room, sink into oblivion. He despised her now and made her ache with regret and shame to remember the content she'd seen in Philip's eyes. Maybe she deserved it. That moment, she simply couldn't think clearly enough to be sure, but she was sorry for it. More than that, she was furious with herself for letting him and his opinion of her come to matter so much in such a short time. She'd known him for only a matter of days and had never, never intended to allow his emotions or hers to become entangled. Casual physical attraction, a few mutual enjoyable hours in each other's company, that was all it was supposed to be. How had it become more? But she knew what when he held her, when he sent her blood swimming with those long, intimate kisses, she wanted more. Now she, who had never considered herself partially sexy or overly emotional, was a frustrated, pitiful wreck because one man had jingled a lock he was no longer interested in opening. There's nothing to be done about it, she reminded herself. Certainly, considering the circumstances, she and Philip Quinn had never been meant to develop a personal relationship of any kind. If they managed to have one now, it would be because of the child. They would both be adult, coldly polite, and in the end, she hoped, reasonable for Seth's sake. She opened her eyes at the waitress, served a salad, and hated the pity she saw on a stranger's face. Can I get you anything else? More water. No, I'm fine. Thank you. You could take that. She had Indian Glory's empty glass. Her stomach rebelled at the thought of food, but she ordered herself to pick up the fork. For five minutes, she toyed with the salad, poking at it while her gaze drifted regularly toward the rear of the restroom. She must be ill again, Sibyl thought wearily. Now she would have to go back, hold Gloria's head, listen to her whining, and mop up, mop up the mess one more pattern. Battling both resentment and the shame that trickled from her, she rose and walked back to the ladies' room. Gloria, are you all right? There was no one at the sinks and no answers from any of the stalls resigned. Sibyl began to nod. Doors open. Gloria? In the last stall, she saw her own wallet lying open on the closed lid of the toilet. Stunned, she snatched it up, flipped through it. Her various identifications were there in her credit cards, but all her cash was gone, along with her sister. End of chapter 9.